Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the WGLNA Season 2 Gold Leaks. I'm your host, Christian Toma. To my left, David Williams. Make sure to check us out on Facebook and YouTube, backslash WGLNA. As always, watch us on Battleviewer.com if you're not already there already. And finally, follow us on Twitter, at WGLNA, so you guys can stay up to date on what's happening in the community around you and answer for us the question of the day. Jizz, who is your pick for best scout in WGLNA? I'm going to have to wait until we see <laughs> Dry Nits play. Wall Hacks uh, had some incredible moments in that set, and then a couple places where he put passive scouting and just got ruined. Mm. So, well, if we're going with today, sure. Perma Blue. Sure. Perma Blue. Bang. <laughs> Confirm killing it right now. Fancy scout. driving, boy. So let, let us know right now, guys, who your <laughs> best pick is for WGLNA Scout. And we were getting ready to go into our third match of the night against 07 and Eclipse on the side of 07. Meadowhawk on the side of Eclipse. We've got Master Pupil. Gentlemen, welcome to the face-off. Meadowhawk, going to go over and start out with you, sir. Now, after last uh, last week's games, right now the position for 07, it seems like relegation is, you know, relegation is a, a serious danger, a serious threat to you guys. What is your plan right now moving forward? Uh, our plan is not to lose, hopefully. <laughs> Genius. Uh, That's a good plan. <laughs> unfortunately, the back half of our schedule is really tough. I mean, after Eclipse, we play High Voltage and then Noble. So those games are going to probably test us. If we don't get at least one point in those, it's going to be rough. Hmm. Well, even it, if it, you... it, that, Then it's all up to what, what the other teams do as opposed to what we do. True, sure. sure. And regardless of your overall standing, it's all about personal satisfaction. That's what I'd be going for at this point, because I would just want to do the best I can. Sure. We You're already about, in it. We already talking about that tonight, yeah. All right, Meadowhawk, who is the scout on your team? Uh, Well, it's normally uh, Fosta, because he likes to call mm -hmm. without having to worry about, you know, being too much in the action. Uh, that could change. Um, we could be changing some things up because of how the games have been going. I think he needs to be more in the action so we know he can call better. As the as to the brawls and stuff, right now he's kind of away from the brawls, so he doesn't have the intel right in his face. Yeah, it's a it's a good topic. We'll have to tricky balance. We'll have to come back to that after the face. Yeah, I'll absolutely. Explain a little I, bit more about I have that. a lot of questions. About and that. one last question, Meadowhawk. Do you have any personal World of Tanks heroes? Um. Well, I would have to uh, go with my battle buddy for life, uh, David Williams. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is this going to keep I'm going, Meadowhawk? Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, you were never his battle buddy for life at this point, right? I mean, right. it just didn't even exist. I don't know what you're talking Master about. Master people, going to go Nailed over it. and start talking to you now. Uh, now, Eclipse, you guys right now are in third place. Uh, so congratulations to that uh, going into this. Thank you. Do you feel as a team that you can that you can hold this position? Do you guys feel like you're going to continue to keep going? I mean, what's the kind of mentality right now on Eclipse? I think we can definitely... Uh keep our spot honestly uh personally i feel like we're within uh the right spot you know third fourth place that's uh you know hmm. that's not bad for a team that uh, is full of new players i mean i've personally been doing competitive play since 2012 when i started but you know not not like wglna so to have a full team of new members on wglna and to be in third fourth place you know i don't find that that bad honestly no not so. not, not bad at all True, true. Who's the scout on your team, pupil? Uh, Dark God Zim. He's oh, yeah. the only one who ever even touches a light tank on the team. <laughs> that is true. He knows. We call him the Bushmaster because he knows every single bush spot on every single map. Hey. It's kind of it's it's kind great, of insane. Great thing for a scout to know. Oh, yes. Man. I'm going to have to leave that one alone. Who is your, or do you have any, World of Tanks heroes? I actually have two. It's the two people who got me into the game uh, by watching their YouTube channels. Um, I mean, they've stopped playing uh, the last, like, I think two years before the Purple Dawn War. But um, <laughs> uh, Smigetti and Griffius uh, oh, of wow. SSGS yeah, from way some, back when. Some old names. Hmm, man, yeah. bringing it back. Names. Heroes. All right, well, thank you. It really does sound like we should have the, the Hall of Fame open for WGLA. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it later. Before we get into that, though, Meadowhawk. Is there anything you'd like to say to Master People before we get started? Just wanted to say, it doesn't matter where you know where the bush is if you don't know how to use it. So, best of luck, guys. <laughs> Master Pupil, your response. Uh, good luck, have fun, and uh, tell Vetro to throw so I can keep my points. <laughs> right, uh, so I don't need to tell him to throw. It's all good. <laughs> best, of, <laughs> best of luck to both of you, and we'll see you shortly. Wow. Feisty. Feisty, indeed. 
Alrighty then. <laughs> Hamill's dwarf from Prokopka. Talk about team morale. Being there, there are two uh, number ones. Eclipse averaging 1.3 object 140s in a battle. Sometimes averaging it a little bit too much <laughs> and giving away his qualifications is that it's happened twice with the exact same tank. Uh, E5, 407. And it's, uh, like I said, Vetro and Master Pupil between the two. I'm curious. I'm curious. Uh, I don't. Maybe Master Pupil has changed his name. But 2012, 2011, that's roughly when I started playing. So you may have been around for a long time. Maybe an old Clan Wars guy. I'm going huh. to I'm have to talk to you about that, people. Maybe we'll do a little digging. Find well, out what we can. You, who you really are. Let's talk about, uh, he was saying, talking about with Fosta. Metalhawk was. Yes. Where Scouting, a caller calling. goes. And this is yeah. always a huge argument. Um, and this is why when I was running, or when, when we were running my team, uh, Friction was when I feel like we were at our best. Friction was essentially the main caller and called a specific unit. And then I was the backup caller, did things when he was either too occupied or mm. perhaps his scope, he couldn't see it. So we had two different sources of intelligence. That's great. And it was difficult. Sometimes we butted heads, not about uh, our overall philosophy of what to do, because you did that in strategy before the battle. Okay. It's uh, about what you see at the time. And people, different people see different things because of the positions that they're in and what they can pay attention sure. to. That's what, what I don't like. Comes out as is when you're a frontline caller, it's important to be in the frontline calling those tanks that are fighting because you're, you're calling the finesse who covers who, who you focus fire, and that's important. Right. But sometimes you're sitting there looking at the mini-map, somebody pokes around a corner and shoots you, and you're like, crap, I just I just took damage, mm. and you don't need to. Mm. It's kind of why I like scouting. Plus, you don't have to tell people what to, what to do to go spot stuff. You do it yourself. So it's an eternal struggle, and there's no right answer there. All right. Well, now our third match is about to get underway. Going to be on Himmelsdorf 07 versus Eclipse. First time we've seen this map tonight. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for tanks. Oh, 7 with an E100, two 215s, two I's, 7s, an E4, and an AMX 1390. Eclipse with 250Bs, two 215s, two an IS4, an IS7, and an RE251. E4. Have we seen that so far? Have you remember? Uh, I, I do not remember seeing that. So, let's take a look. It's the E3, but with a turret. Whoa! That's it. Oh, okay. You might say, well, why would you bring that over the E3? Ah, eh, because it's worse than the E3 <laughs> in a lot of ways. Huh. That, that turret, that turret's okay. a lie. That turret is a lie. You can penetrate <laughs> straight through that thing. Really? Uh, at least you used to be able to. Maybe, maybe they buffed it somewhat recently, but it also can't turn the turret all the way around. As you can see, this gigantic engine compartment, or perhaps Jeez. fog machine. Not sure which. Looking at it right now. Definitely mobile, mobile, mobile fog machine. Mobile fog that machine. sounds like a brilliant. You tank set up idea. cover. Yeah, it's just you, 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 that way no one knows. Well, I guess they would just. It's actually not a good idea, but it seems like it. And well, most of the fighting coming down here in the eight line already. Oh, this is Foster. just an awkward situation. 07 is going to try and plow directly through it. Foster getting some side shots, trying to push him off. Eclipse is easily getting pushed off by him. It's just a 1390. I don't see why that's happening. But T1 diabetic wow. taking a boatload of damage in that, in that exchange. Finally, Fossa taking a shot, 394 there at 1390. He's deciding to uh, not shoot the final two and going on an early readout here. Meanwhile, Bubble Boy Carl taking 75 there, and then IS-4 and a lot of damage has gone across there onto Eclipse. Very awkward position, but now look at the flank there coming out. Synergy 3K is caught, 1492 in damage, and Master People is going to finish him off. The first tank falling, 407, and T1 Dieback now is low himself for Eclipse. He gets off one more shot off the PDP. No, he doesn't. Vetro is going to stop before he can, and now Camelot Warbander and Vetro coming around to join the fight. Tigers take down Makos. Two tanks have fallen there, 407, so now it is six for Eclipse against the five. 407 and just two minutes out of laps and already a very exciting battle We're going out here in the <laughs> northeastern side. Draw cap takes some damage. He's bouncing tons of shots there. Vetro finally finishing him off and a two for two exchange has gone through. ZXT taking out a lot of damage himself. Battle has begun, or the battle will continue going back and forth here. Foss on top of the hill. It'll be interesting to see how he kind of contributes to, to this team fight because right now he is not doing much. Coming back around, maybe try to join uh, down on the bottom. But Tigers in that 50B taking him down. Vetro, a huge shot there. War Banner taking him out in return. Four tanks for 07 now against a four for Eclipse. Eclipse is up just about 500 points of HP. And now Fosta has joined the fight. Let's see if this is enough as Mort takes down Camper on the 100. And War Banner has been surrounded here in this alleyway. Finally, ZXT and Fosta have come to fight. Mort looks like he's going to be the target there. Fosta picking one up. Bone Boy 
Carl takes down War Banner, but it looks like Fossa is going to take down Master Pupil as well. A 1390 has taken down now two tanks. Two more shots remain. He's just going to try to uh, whittle down Mobile Boy Carl as much as he can. Ball Boy taking 893, ZXNT 758. One more shot for Fossa, and that is going to do it. Dark God Zim missing a shot there, and the RA251, but Bubble Boy is going to clean him up, and now it is just going to be Dark God Zim chasing down Fossa. Good thing the RA251 is alive. He should be able to keep up with this uh, light tank right now. 297 going into him. Fossa going to try to cut it into the courtyard. He's going to be able to make the corner and tie. Dark God Zim continue to chase the side to back up. He knows he can't go anywhere, and he flips. He's going to pick up the first victory of our third match of the night against 07. Very interesting place to fight in indeed. That north that northeastern part of Himmelsdorf, we rarely see fights over there. No one's going for cap pressure. 07 just kind of was barreling up against Eclipse. Caught out Eclipse a little bit, and as the fight went on, what did you see? Why why was Eclipse kind of really mainly able to come out on top there? They got isolation on tanks in the eight line. Okay. When that split happened to come flank them, ah. they're able to just drive forward. Gotcha. That's kind of the problem with splitting sometimes. You have to have standoff positions, so when people come at you... They also take tons of damage. They take a ton of damage. The problem with that is if they then turn around and just envelop the flank that you have... Overmatch. Then they drive away from you, and you're further away from getting close to them. Mm. That's a delicate thing. You mm. have to have the right flank at the right time, sure. the right tanks. Very specific. It all has to be right. Very specific. Well, that's tanks, man. There's a there's hundred variables. And you got to try and cut down as many variables as you possibly can. And even then, there are always things you can't control. <laughs> Moving chess. Always. Let's go to the numbers. numbers. Let's see how that match went by the numbers, if by you will. By the numbers. Actually, that's Thorin's gig. I'm going to leave it. You can have that. I'm not going to take your <laughs> you stuff. You can have Master that. Master Pupil with 4,000 so damage. Thank you. My fantasy team appreciates it after the catastrophe that was the last match <laughs> for my team. <laughs> Bubble Boy Carl with 3,300, Mort with 2,300, and then we're here for 07. That is Warbander with 33, uh, ZXFT with 27, Venture with 27. That's a high damage game. Uh, lot, Why? Because it's Himmelsdorf. Damage. Yeah, Himmelsdorf. city fights. You know, there might be an actual strategy, now that I think about it, in picking fantasy. If you had a team set that was likely going to play like Ghost Town or Ghost Town and Himmelsdorf, and you expect them there? to play a long time? It doesn't like, that would be a huge point farm? Hey, Tim, B Ted, maybe if maybe you can talk about this in your show, or maybe we can talk about it later. Because right now it is the next battle. Eclipse up one to zero against 07. We switch sides. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got. Four tanks. You're on something, David. I know you're on something. Well, there's also cap pressure there. That's the majority of it. Excuse True. Big reset True. points. We're gonna come Guys, back to this. Point farm. 07 with an E100, 2215, an IS7 and an E5, a W100, an AMX 1390, Eclipse with 50B, 2215, two IS7s, an E3, and an R251. I just want to be like, we're gonna get rich, Ma. I just want to like <laughs> scream that. We did it. We won the <laughs> fantasies. <laughs> um, so yeah, man, I would love to just have a whole show dedicated to fantasy mm. and, and the statistics and the analyzation of that, the fun. analysis of that. I just, well, we're busy. We got this show to do. Yeah. We got time to do two shows. <laughs> yeah. Be Ted. Tim, you got it. Be great. Fossa going for that early proxy spot to make sure nobody can go up the eight line. Caught kind of in the middle there. Oh, maybe? Maybe? Yes? No? Maybe? No? No? Oh, yes? Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you, Sean. Diabetic wow. shot over to Makos and taking one huge shot in return from Camador. 854. E100. E100 is vicious. If you want easy damage in a public match, play the E100. And, and, that, and, I mean, and just, this, again, the sound of that gun is so satisfying. Indeed. So satisfying. Indeed. Fossa doing a great job proxy fighting T1 Diabetic, who's decided to just get out of there, there for now. Was, uh, there was a long time ago, there was a mod pack. Uh, because the game sounds years ago weren't as great as they are now. Okay. There was a mod pack that did a realistic sound overhaul. It's very similar to the way they are now. And I remember the first time I installed it, just... They basically take my hands off mouse and keyboard and just, just sit there and smile. <laughs> just like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> Dolby surround sound, just rocking it. More now here on top of the hill in that E3, not the E4. Eclipse did a little bit of a check in the uh, courtyard area, realizing it's kind of stuffed. They're going to rotate up around the hill in there. Tiger's pretty far ahead of everything in the 50B. If he gets spotted, it's game over for the entirety of Eclipse because he's a very important tank. So, not a huge fan of the location he's in right now. Uh, however, it may be enough to psych out 07 if they did see him. But there's also a certain bend to it where it's like, well, they're not likely to see you. Okay, or oh, he'll do that. Or they get shot. Or he'll do that. Uh, <laughs> so notice, notice <laughs> oh, that. Man. Notice the Vetro did not get spotted. Well, he did just by Dark God Zim. 
strangely didn't spot Dark Godzim when he did it. Hmm. Crazy talk. Tigers didn't get spot or didn't spot um, Vetro when he got shot. It's because he, when he was turning, he backed up just a tad, and the rear of his tank got into the vision line of Vetro. Wow! But his viewports didn't line up to see Vetro. Wow! The tank, the tank doesn't have eyes glued to every single portion of it. You gotta see it with a viewport, mm. or one of the viewing points. Ha. Technically, there's no viewports in the engine, but there are viewing points. Sure. That the game counts. Now, and is that just another layer? I mean, do do you would you as a captain stress that to your team? Like, guys, we gotta find oh. out where these teams. Vision work. is one of the most important things to learn mm. about how this game works. You need to know there are essentially I forget what they're called rays or something like that. There's different points on the tank that uh, are essentially spotting constantly. And depending on distance, the game server is updating whether something it's doing spotting checks on a timer. So it's like at close distance, it's faster. When you get far away, it can be as long as a second. Wow. So there are actually situations. They may have tightened it up. But there were actually situations in the past where somebody could drive across an alley and you wouldn't see him, but you get spotted. Wow. And it was just it was game mechanics. But you have to build strategies around these things. You have to know. And return fire going out. Mortal only taking 107 in that but doing quite a bit to make us all the way down here. As Eclipse is just softening up 07 to make their push, 07 certainly got a lot of hit points to soften up. So even though those volleys have gone back and forth, 07 is still in the lead, HP per HP. That's right, 13,000 going into 07, 12,000 onto Eclipse. We'll throw that 700, so almost 13,000 there going into them. And now Makos taking a shot, just barely above half health there on the D5, coming back around to look at the Northern Caps, going back and forth. Mort, T1 Diabetic are spotted out there, and Mort taking 570 points of damage there. A nice chunk out of that E3. Uh, cap pressure has been applied now. Dark God Zim in the RE2 by one, and Tigers, that 50 B here, is going to have cap pressure. So anybody who doesn't come directly from uh, T1 Diabetic's side, where Mort was supposed to be watching him, and unfortunately where for Eclipse, where most of 07 is, although they are changing that by driving you know, ZXFT up to the top side, if they come this way, they're driving directly with three tanks, just waiting to support Tigers and Dark Godzilla. All right, here, draw cap has to spot out. Vetro takes a shot in him. 426 here, but he takes him, uh, Vetro takes him in return. 385. We're going to start coming around the corner here. Dark Godzilla actually uh, backing off the cap, so no more cap pressure for Eclipse right now. And three minutes and 26 seconds are all that remains in the clock. Uh, 07 has done a great job whittling the time down. We should see if Eclipse will run out of time. Will they feel too pressured to make a move they just definitely don't want to take? Or do they have a plan here? It looks like they're sending master people uh, down the side, all by Bumble Boy and Drock Mort taking a shot there from Synergy down the northern cap from 07. Now th about three minutes in the clock, and the rest are moving in. Mort taking another shot. Looks like this is what Eclipse is looking for. They're trying to get a lot of damage there. Tigers looks like he was set on fire there. A thousand points of damage taking shots from Fossa from the back. A thousand sixty-three. Looks like the fire has been extinguished in his, that AMX for DB, but he just. So much damage for that position here. And now the fight for the Northern Cap has begun. Dark God Zim taking some shots in the RE2 by one. Everyone is lit up. Everyone is spotted. Let's see who will come out on top. Will it be 07 or will it be Eclipse? As Makos finds Dark God Zim, T1 Diabetic takes out Fata. A one for one exchange. The scouts are now gone for both these teams. 07 still leads in the HP as Master People takes 850 there in that 5B. T1 Diabetic being surrounded in the 97. There is only a matter of time before he goes down. Oh boy, finds Energy 3K. Fetro takes out Master Pupil. One for one exchange going back and forth. Five members on the side of Eclipse against the five for 07. But Eclipse is down so much HP as Warbanner takes down T1 Diabetic. And now Tigers in that PTB is on reload there on the cap. Vetro getting tracked, taking some damage as well in his 5B. One or two more shots might end him, but he might be able to take down Bubba and Carl before that happens. But it looks like it is not going to matter. Bubba and Carl does take down Vetro. And now four tanks for 07 against the four for Eclipse. Uh, Eclipse unfortunately has 19 points of damage. Now 18 as Makos finds Rock. 07 still sitting pretty at over 4, which was over 4,000. Now 3,700. Warbanner taking a shot there from Bubba Boy Carl, who should be going down. Any moment now, Camper has to be careful in that E100. One shot from Bubba Boy, and he can go down here. Tigers in that 50B going head to head against the E5. One more shot. Oh no, no, he's just barely not taking it. Bubba Boy does take down Camador there, and now it is a three on three. A minute and 22 oh, seconds left. No, the bounce coming out there. And now, oh man, was that was that Tiger shot? No, that was Mort firing from the top. If he loads AG oh. in this next one, he guaranteed will pen make us or will kill make us in this shot. It's just whether oh. he loaded it or not, he's gonna get the vector. There it goes, boom. 
picking him up there. Down, nice shot still there. A long way to go, especially that WE100 there in the back. If Orkin making a connection with him with HE, hey, they might be in oh! business. But Tiger now hitting it by the E100, but he goes down to Warbander in that moment. Surprised the E100 didn't actually get any sort of penetrating shots huh. on that. But right now, Mort's in a very sticky situation. He's got to hit one shot on Warbander. He's got to make the first one count. No track shots, no non pens. He's got to go one for one right now, or this game is going to slip right out of his hands right there. Uh, Already in trouble. W and hundreds actually. Takes a tease. Oh, he's just driving away because he's yeah. not enough time. Yeah, to 30 count. seconds on the clock. He can just it's run out. He should be fine. Warbander going to go head to head. Oh, Mort does take down Warbander what there. Up? But uh, ZXFT on the run. Mort cannot catch up to him in time. And this is going to be 07 picking up a victory here against Eclipse in the final, final two seconds. I'm glad to see Mort on a team now. I believe he was put into Eclipse due to uh, an emergency roster change, which uh, I don't know. I don't actually know the, the details of what goes into that. That wasn't around when I played. Uh, so, so probably something about a player completely quitting, something that causes an emergency. So Rome has been taken out for Mort, I believe, is how yes. it goes. Yep. Uh, and congratulations there to 07 defending on that one. Tied it up one to one. That's right. On Himmelsdorf. Now, now like, like, like we were kind of talking about, again, the city fights usually both you know, both times ending in a lot of damage, a lot of tanks. They had, you know, came down to one-on-one -on -one for each of the teams. Uh, 07 just seems like they just did a better job whittling down Eclipse in that situation. Yeah, Eclipse had some stuff going for them. It's Himmelsdorf. What can I say? It's Himmelsdorf. <laughs> both teams both teams strategically, there's nothing I can really criticize and say that was wrong. This was You could have done this better or that. It mostly just comes down to you didn't hit your shots uh, and circumstantial some stuff. Bounces. There's definitely some execution errors on Eclipse. Okay. for all of that. But let's go to the no statistics. This I said I wouldn't do that. I said I wouldn't do Thorin's tagline oh. for, his, for his show. <laughs> you saved it. You for saved his it. show. I'm just advertising it for free. You're welcome. <laughs> and also, Branding. great job on Inside the NBA U League. Anyways, Mort, 3,000 damage in the E3. And Bubble Boy Carl, right behind him, nearly 3,000 in the IS-7. Coral with seven shots, seven hits, seven <laughs> penetrations. Beautiful. Nice job. Vetro on the other side. Always a money maker, that Vetro. Love it. Put him on. Love it. 3,158. In fact, <laughs> I wonder who, now that now that Ox didn't have a great game today, huh? I wonder if he just points lost his uh, points for battle or his Maybe. overall. Maybe. Well, yeah, either way. We'll find out. We'll find out. What I was going to say about Mort is that uh, his previous team captain, um, well, Caller, not the team captain, for Refuse was Rude Awakening. Mm. Rude Awakening used to tell me, he's like, Mort's such a great player. We used to have a spot for him, and it kills me. Huh. So I'm happy to see him on a team now, Good and he's doing boy. well. Killing it right there. Nice pick up there at the end. We are now getting ready to go into our next battle. It is all tied up one to one here on Himmelsdorf. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. 07 with E100, 2215, CY7s and E5 and AMX 1390, Eclipse with the 50B, 2215s and IS7 and W100 and RU251. That was speedy, speedy reading. They can read them. Yeah. And I can read them faster. <laughs> That's pretty much how it works Boom. out. I don't think anybody wants me to be here. An E100, <laughs> along with a 215B. I mean, maybe once. I would appreciate that once. <laughs> but you're right. Maybe, maybe, maybe you do it one time. <laughs> For the jokes. <laughs> For the jokes. For the laughs. As we all know, in the beginning of Himmelsdorf, we've got the time. Not a lot happens, yeah. Man, it's just it's nature of mind. the map. Too many corners. you got to check stuff. Uh, but Play man, when it, when it kicks off, it kicks off. It's like a highlight reel map. Just <laughs> always some good stuff happening there. <laughs> and honestly, some of the best technical, just player skill outside of positional play. Positional sword. play is like it's it's hard. Half the time, you just get caught in a bad position, and you got to deal with somebody in a good one that you didn't know was there. Okay. So it's hard for skill to guarantee you get put in a good position for positional play. So mm. it's kind of a weird thing to gauge people by. But in maps like this, there are some positions, but a lot of it's just, can you play your tank well? It's mm. kind of why I like it in some instances. And we also talked about how just like a lot of it is just these crazy random corners or little windows yeah, that you just need to know. Where nightmares are made. Where, ni <laughs> where nightmares are made. Synergy 3K being the only member for 07. Be sitting on top of the hill. 07 <laughs> pushing it just kind of solid uh, 7, 8. Uh, road push going right up to the north here. The Eclipse getting some information. Looks like it was enough to start sending those members back. And now they have a RU251 and a 50B coming on for the flank here. Uh, so, again, we kind of talk about the balance of when you do this, how you have to be careful. 
Uh, because if 07 sees and spots those guys too soon, boom, overmatch. Uh, but on Hippelsdorf, is it a little is it a little less risky to do that? Because there's so many corners and so many alleys and so many you know places you can't escape to going for a flank. It is less risky and more risky all at the same time. Hmm. I'm gonna err on the side of less risky though if you know where the enemy tanks are to a certain extent. So it's more risky if you don't, because you can run into a blind cor a corner, a blind tank at any point in time. Sure. But if you have a good idea where most of them are, the less risky, because you can show up, do damage, and they can't really catch you because all the corners. Gotcha. Oh, uh, 07, though, putting some cap pressure on here. 20 seconds now on the clock. Pasta, as well as the E100. DGZ coming in from behind. Going to get some racked up defensive points. 10 seconds on the right clock now. here. He is going to find it. There it is. Give the light. Missing the shot, though. He is on it, reload. It's so RU251. A reset, looks like. 14 seconds now. The other one. There it goes. Now, Master People coming around with Mort. Going right on through. And Tigers picking up Warbander. Eclipse finding the first tank. And that is an IS7 falling early for 07. The cap pressure have been alleviated. And Camador getting totally dominated there in the D100. T1 Diabetic being the one to finish him off. Oh boy, Carl, and then IS7 doing a great job. He's kind of racking up points. Dark on Zim, though, now is taking some damage finally here. Makos, 549. It looks like uh, just, this continues. 07 is slowly but surely starting to fall. It's going to take a uh, pretty amazing play. It's going to be very unfortunate bounces for Eclipse to be able to turn this one around for 07 as Master People takes on Fossa. Petro does find Tigers, but Bubble Boy Carl does find Makos. And IS7, three tanks remaining for 07 against the six for Eclipse here. Four minutes, 50 seconds on the clock. Eclipse has plenty of time to finish off these three remaining tanks. Dark God Sam taking down Synergy 3K. Rocks uh, will be going down very shortly. Now, Metro finding draw cap there. So a nice pickup from him. Be finishing off that E5, and now just Fesh Romain. Eclipse will be able to take this one, picking up two victories against 07's one. Third match of the night. Metro <laughs> not going down without a fight. Picking up more there in that IS7. Finally, Bubble Boy Carl going to be one to finish him off there. Congratulations to Eclipse for our third battle, picking up their second victory. Uh, and one of the things that has been really fun you know, for me to kind of learn and see is, is, is how generally the case is if you're a team applying cap pressure and you are almost there, but the other team manages to just get one reset on you, it's it just pretty much crumbles. It just pretty much crumbles right, like just like that, which seems like cap is so risky. So I would, in my mind, would use it more of like a, hey, let's just use cap to pull them to us, and then we're just going to forget about it. Because very rarely do you see it actually working out, then like getting the full cap which, with most yep. of the members alive. Yep. Dark God Zim also pretty much won the game there. <laughs> really? Yeah. So we can talk about it while we go to numbers. Check it out. Where let's talk about how awesome Dark God Zim is. I'm 90% sure we're going to. Yep. <laughs> Camador did zero damage. Now, I'm not highlighting that to pick on Camador. I'm highlighting that because there is a situation that a scout can put you in. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. So what happened was DGZ showed up on the side, started firing for resets. Camador didn't like that, wanted to make sure he stopped, turned and fired. Right when he fired, guess who showed up? I believe it was uh, Master Pupil. I think Drawcab was there, a couple other people. But they drove up and they basically did a, a thousand plus damage to him and almost killed oh. him before he even reloaded. Oh. That's the thing. The out a shot. Of a scout. You didn't have to do anything besides make the guy turn his turret. But before wow. we get out of it, Vetro did 3,000. Master Pupil did 3,000. Drawcab's right behind him. And I also would like to point out something I noticed. Drawcab is actually draw back, but back is backwards. Oh! Burr, 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 and it all burr. makes sense, right? Logic. It all makes sense. It all now makes sense. Draw back, backwards, draw cap. But, but, oh, but I, we had to call him draw cap, that's his name. But very clever, very clever. Every once in a while, those kind of things, things happen. Learn. You ever play a game with somebody and you're calling out somebody's name and you say it and then they repeat something back to you or they say something back to you that makes way more sense when you look at the name? I'm talking about like somebody will spell something. Like funny. when I was saying Arclight, 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 and you're like, no, Christian, it's Arclight. I guess kind of. <laughs> Which you could just it's, be dead wrong. We'll come back to that when I find a better example of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into the next battle as Eclipse is up 2-1 against 07. We've switched sides on Himmelsdorf. Let's see what we've got for our tanks. 07 with one AMX 50B. One <laughs> yeah. yes. E100. What next? One FE 215 uh -huh. Model B. Okay. One IS-7. <gasps> Two T110. Two of them? E5s. Oh, wow. 
an AMX 1390. While Eclipse. Yeah, stop. David, stop. Also has tanks. 50B, 2215, 2I7s, and E3 and RGB. I thought I wanted it. I thought no, I exactly. did. And you, exactly. Thank you, for, thank you for showing me that I just don't. <laughs> Trust me. Everybody can read them. There are a couple people out there who, uh, I mean, everybody can read them on the sides. There are a handful of people like Tim Hamlet, who we pointed out, um, that sometimes can only listen. Right. That is why we read them out. That's why we discuss it. And we do this for you, Tim. It's important for those people. Otherwise, we get it done as quickly as possible because <laughs> you can see it as well. Foster taking some damage or getting to that position to proxy spot, but he has gotten there, so he looks like he might be safe. Team and Diabetics have to commit pretty hard to get him, and he can start taking some shots from across the courtyard to do so, but he does not care. Takes the shot, 450 there. It takes 755, though, in return, and on more volleys coming up from 07 as Tiger is on top of the hill, taking over 800 points of damage in that 50B, and it looks like Eclipse is starting Oof. to get in that same position again, over 1,100 points of damage. O7 is doing a great job, just again, whittling down Eclipse as we get into this uh, map when they are on defense. And there's there's no need for this right now. There's no need. From, I from think things are gonna stagnate for a little bit here, so I'm gonna bust open the map, we'll talk about it. Great. So, here, E3 goes here, locks down this lane, guaranteeing safety. Then you take Dark God Zim, bring him up around, bring him here or here, gets shots on this guy, game over. Wiped him, then you can move your tanks up this way, or you can rotate him around, whatever you want to do. I'm going to draw big, big sloppy lines. But the whole point is, you don't have to poke your face around to get the AMX 1390. In fact, that's exactly that's what, what they do. want you to do. Right. They're all set up and waiting for it, and obviously it did not work out. So you roll them. Fossa still, still alive. going anyways. Look, he's going to go right there, and then DG is going to go over the top, and he's going to end up right next to the cap anyways. So this is all directly in his path. The only so thing he's got to worry about is one IS-7 shooting him. Kind of unnecessary damage there. there. I mean, yeah, 3,000 plus damage. T1 Diabetics there now. This is going to take him a lot longer to kill this guy. And he actually got a, an even better spot than the one we saw Wally Ooh. use and the one I was mentioning before. I like that real quick. Let's check that out. Right here. Right here. You can actually drive up on this pile of rubble. You can just turn it over and chum right there. Nice and safe. Nice and safe. Safe and sound. So yes, I mean just 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 some unnecessary aggression coming out from Eclipse. We'll see if that comes back and costs him because that was so it's, much damage. It's sloppy. That's all. Okay. And it, sometimes people think that they can sneak in shots um, either because their angle is good and they're going to bounce any return fire, or perhaps they assume that the entire team just lo unloaded a salvo, so they're going to be reloading mm. and uh, they can squeeze in another shot. But it doesn't always work out that way. Do you think that Eclipse was thinking that they could have one shot faster there? No. Okay. So there wasn't no, an I7 won't one shot at 1390. I mean, he was like below half health, but not, but not by much. I don't think. I mean, it's. I'm wondering if it's that unlikely. Would, I wonder if that would have been more like, oh yeah, like yeah, we'll just send one tank to make sure we guarantee him to free up information for us, but it didn't work out for them. Put it this way, if you're getting into a position where it's like I may take a little bit of damage for a good chance to do something, yeah. Or rather, I'm, there's a there's a small chance I'll take a lot of damage for a mediocre chance to do something. <laughs> it doesn't Prob add up. Probably the probability it. of it's not good already. <laughs> you know? Gotcha. And w especially when there's such concrete responses to that position in particular. Mm. I mean, it, it's not new. People sure. have been doing it for a sure. long time. Granted, it used to be done with a T1, which would die in one shot. But, well, <laughs> unless you got oh, really unlucky. Past. Yep. Four minutes, just a, just above four minutes on the clock here. So a seven again doing a great job. Just, uh, just killing time uh, against Eclipse. Eclipse is in a very uncomfortable place. They don't have a whole lot of options. They bled a lot of HP to attempt what they're trying right now. They need to get somebody on the three line in order to damage tanks on the way back. Tigers has got to get up the one line far enough to do damage to the 215. Uh, and Vetro's there. It's not looking pretty. It's not yeah. looking good for Eclipse. Very likely rolling into a 2 2 tie for our next map. But we have plenty of time to find out if that is true. I certainly thought things were going to happen and then had it go completely the opposite direction before. So maybe that would be one of those times. Yeah, oh, and again, I mean, 07 doing a fantastic job uh, going up against Eclipse right now. Eclipse, you know, higher on the standings than them, but they're showing that they're, yeah, we're, we can play with the guys too. We can get our defensive wins. 07's a great team. They've got a lot of talent on it. They've just been playing terribly the past two games. Maybe that, maybe now's the time to change. Synergy 3K, take it on Master Pupil. That's a good place uh, to start. This now is a one for one for both these teams. A 5B down for Eclipse and a 1390. Down 407. Eclipse starting to put on that western cap pressure here on Himmelsdorf. Oh boy, Carl taking a little bit of damage there in that IS7. Draw cab is the one uh, to put the pressure on for Eclipse. 
now it's going to be up to 07 to respond. Uh, now, David, if you are 07, obviously you have this information of these guys over here uh, on the eastern side of the map for Eclipse. Do you just go over and try to take care of them now, or is it not worth it? You have to be more worried about the... Uh, is, is 30 seconds enough time to go over and do that, or not at all? It is. And they want to get moving on this as quickly as possible. Everything locking down in the east. The only tank that's stuck is the IS-7 Warbander. He's just, he's dead if he leaves. So he's better off to stay okay, there. So and in fact, stay. he can kind of help lock down what uh, T1 Diabetic's trying to do. Tiger should be dead right now. Vetro should have come right over the top in the one line and just put a clip into him and he died. As long as he uh, gets the shot off first, Woo! he win. Either way, all these resets are going to prevent Eclipse from being able to cap successfully. Tiger's is now exposed. He is firing off a number of shots. Vetro's wow. dancing a little bit too long in the wrong column. So Tiger's may escape this if Vetro doesn't rotate over fast enough or if Vetro's got an empty clip, which it looks like both of them do. That's kind of a missed opportunity there. Tigers could come back to haunt them big time in this situation as 07 starting to show a little bit of cracks in their overall defense. Their HP is still slightly ahead, but with Warbander going down, oh. it's now starting to get closer and closer for Eclipse. Eclipse doing a great job trying to call the way back here. A minute and 45 seconds on the clock. Clock will they be able to do it as Bubble Boy Carl takes 374 in that I-7. One more shot, and he will be going down. But it looks like Tigers in that 50B is up and loaded. He has three shots remaining, but one more shot will take him out of the fight. 07's got to be worried about him right now. Mort is still on top of the hill. There is one shot from Tigers. Second shot going into Camador. 1,300 points of damage. Tigers could be able to finish him off, but he's got to be extremely careful as, again, one more shot will finish him. 363. Tigers' last shot will be able to finish off Camador if he can't connect it. Camador on the reel, but it's not going to happen because Drock is going to take him down. Now 07, just four members against these six of Eclipse with 60 seconds. Just a little more than six seconds on the clock. It looks like they'll be able to do this. They're going to continue to put on cap pressure. Meanwhile, T1 Diabetic going head-to-head against Rox, joining by Dark God Zim now, 217, going there into that E5. Rox does pick up T1 Diabetic, but Dark God Zim should be able to finish him off unless something super unfortunate happens here. One shot ready, there's a shot, that's a bounce, and that is one of those unfortunate things that can happen. The, uh, the cap right here is still going up, a nice bit of damage there, but only 41 going to Dark God Zim, 389 now. Dark God should be able to finish him off with this final oh. shot. No, another, was that a miss? Just a complete, get one more a complete miss, miss here. One He's gotta shot. be careful nice if Rox can stay alive. He, he bounced it, it again. Rox will be able to take him down. There he goes. The RU251 falling. That was a huge opportunity for Eclipse to find that one. It is now going to be up to Mort to come take down that E5. 20 seconds on the clock, but only 16 overall. The cap is now irrelevant for Eclipse. They need to take down these members. They're trying to apply cap pressure, but if O7 is smart, they just keep Vetro back for eight more seconds. Rox starting to run here. Synergy 3K taking down Bubble Boy, and with only three seconds on the clock, four, uh, four Four members of 07 alive. That is not going to be enough. 07 is going to find Ooh. their second victory, tying it up now 2 2 against Eclipse. What a battle right there at the end. Man, super unfortunate for that RE251. Just kind of going back and forth, back and forth. Is that just a pretty tr tough matchup? Is there a lot of, uh, you know, where, 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 if you were the RE251, where are you aiming to try to pin those shots? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say <laughs> once he got that close to the E5, it really, really didn't have a good chance to win. Gotcha. Okay. Plus, I believe he's good still over in the European side of things across the Atlantic, so his ping is probably Ooh. not particularly great. Bad well, combo. Meanwhile, I believe Arklet has now moved into uh, the North American region. Oh, okay. So he actually has a better ping than he did Welcome before. Uh, meanwhile, Dark Odds him still over there. So, just yeah. tricky. Yeah. Not it's, place you want to be. No, it's firing heat rounds. And the one thing you really don't want to fire at an E5 is heat rounds. And they don't really have good alternatives. He tried to pin the side of the turret. You can do that. He, he tried to shoot the hatch. Okay. But the hatch isn't as vulnerable as it used to be. And ah. it's tricky to shoot without ping, let alone with ping. So he would have been better off standing further away and having his, uh, his counterpart there try and stay alive longer? It's not an easy answer. Sure. Not oh, an great, easy answer. Great, it's a nice great, temp, though. A great shot from 07, getting him in that position. Uh, let's check out the stats. Let's do it. We do have a timer for 07, so we've got time. Synergy 3K with nearly 3,800 damage. Vetro behind him with 3,200 damage. Rocks, 2,600 damage. Makos, 2,400 damage. A lot of damage. Oh, damn. That's really all I can say about it. I think you're it. right, David. I think you're on to something with these city maps. Well, yeah, that's why I'm the analyst, That's Christian. why you are over there. They're able to read out damage numbers and say they're big. <laughs> Tigers <laughs> with a 50B, 36-36. <laughs> uh. 
pretty good game for him overall. A lot of people would have died in the situation he was in, so he picked his shots very well. Mm. He just a sliver health. Vetro should have canceled out any possibility of him even doing that, but it, it happened. Master People over here, I don't know, mm. got wrecked pretty much. Where did he go down? Do you remember? I don't remember I can't that at remember. all. Probably one of the earlier. I think he took a book. Yeah, he took a lot of damage in the A-line, if I remember correctly. Okay. Wasn't keeping a solid eye on that. I was looking more at what happened in the overall picture. But Bubble Boy Carl was about 2,500 and T1 Diabetic about 2,400 yeah. in there as well. Yeah. Well, and again, well, one thing I also, I really kind of was like appreciating about 07 is the cap pressure was, you know, again, it, it, I mean, at certain times it, it would overmatch the overall game cap. So if, if it would have gone on, Eclipse would have picked up the victory. But the resets going through at the end, it got to a point where it was like 20 seconds on the cap and like 13 seconds overall in the game and you know 07 was not worried they didn't like sending guys to try to get those those you know last minute resets they didn't need to because that could have cost them their tanks so really good restraint coming out from them we're now moving into prokhorovka pro pro prokhorovka proke we're moving to proke now between both these teams and kind of based on what we've seen eclipse on this map 07 on this map who do you think regardless of what happened you know happened tonight we had to have a kind of a stronger play here Clips? Okay. Okay. I yeah. guess. All right. Well, it's 2 2. Yeah. It's tied. I was, yeah, I'll say, yeah, regardless tonight, because right now, 07 is doing a fantastic job. It is all tied up. It could be anyone's game. We're getting ready now to go into Prokhorovka. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. He stumped me on that one. 07 with two E5s, an STB, a T22, two TBPs, and an RU251. Eclipse with two IS-7s, a 142 STBs, a T110E3, and an RU251 as well. So do you think if if his name is draw back, but the back is inversed, he's that, it, that it's kind of like it's kind of like saying he's the opposite of a drawback? Yeah. He's the advantage That's brilliant. draw the more, the more you think about this, the more you say, the more it's brilliant. Keep talking. <laughs> it, doesn't, it honestly doesn't matter if that's why he originally did it. It now, to begin with, it now is. That's what he's gonna it's, say. Now. He's like, oh yeah, it's yeah. totally for my reason. Yo, yeah, yeah, that's I'm pretty why. smart about it. I'm pretty, uh, pretty proud of my name. It. Hey, I don't, I'm not putting past him. He definitely could. Synergy over this. here is trying to be a prophet. It's like I'm gonna do 3k damage. Synergy, mm -hmm. 3,000. All right, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if you can do that right now. Keep an eye out for that in stats next time we go to it. Uh, Dark God Zim being spotted there, doing a nice little spotting around the R2 of one Foster as well. So both of these scouts scouting as we see, and this time. Totally kind of opposite from what we've actually been seeing a lot here on Proke is, is a lot of the members going for the west and kind of stalling out there. And it's the eastern kind of scouts that will make or break. This time, both teams going over kind of favoring the east or the center of the map here. We now have a push coming out from Eclipse, bringing some uh, IS-7s down. This rest of 07 starting to back off and reposition. Dark on Zim getting on top of the hill here. 07 flocking in mass away from the eastern side. Nope, nope. Nope, 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 maybe, nope. Maybe drawing back, if you will. Oh, oh. bringing it back. <laughs> drawing it back. Hey, nice. <laughs> all of 07's going to move over in the west, try and divide this down the rail line, as we've previously drawn all over the map, the different quadrants that everything exists in. Looks like they saw Eclipse's positions and said, I don't want to engage that way. Let's do it someplace else. Right here again, Eclipse is on defense. So if they can just hold out for the full duration or successfully cap. Now that I think uh, about it, their caps, it's good. a fairly good example of thinking alternatively. So a lot of times you run into somebody, people think about how to get the advantage where you are there. Let's send a flank around this way. Let's, let's try and fight here, but in a way we're going to win. Okay. And some other people look at it as, well, the West is open. <laughs> sure, just different perspective. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's good to practice challenging your perspective like that. Sometimes somebody pushes up really close to them and you want to kill them, and the answer is, well, if he's here, I can go this way. Hmm. And he doesn't even matter. Yeah, different way looking. So you need both. Both are the correct ways of doing things, in a sense. Yeah, di different. And you need to be balanced. You need to know when to do it and when not to. Right. Different situations will call for different scenarios where one is more stronger than the other. Mord over here in the E3. Getting ready to put some people in the dirt, probably. The mortician, oh, if you will. I will. I mean, it's probably where his name comes from. <laughs> eh? Nice. Unless maybe his name is just Mort. 420, they're going into Camador. Yeah, nice little shot from Tigers down the south on the railroad. Uh, now, 
this uh, the, you know these two tanks we have here for Eclipse, the 140 and the 251. They are they have a good posi uh, position where they are. You know they're up elevated on the railroad tracks. They can get some shots here onto any of the guys in the valley. Fosta 776 into his RU251, and Bubble Ooh. Carl is going to finish him off there. That is a scout down, and again, kind of speaking of scouts, this is the map that we talked about was super scout heavy. I mean, this is this is a map where a lot of the, a lot of it kind of comes stalemate, and we, it's up to the scouts to kind of provide the information for the rest of the team on what to do here. Uh, what we have now is kind of less of a what we usually see. It's kind of over those quadrants. This way, it's just Eclipse spread out, like kind of up this dead center, and now 07 is on the run. With that scout missing, uh, is that you know is where 07 is that going to be just that much? Tougher to break into. They were counting on that for cap pressure, and I don't think they want to engage without cap Yikes. pressure. So they're trying to rotate, to rotate back the other way. But if this works out the way that it does a lot of the time, yeah, they'll be surrendering the northwest quadrant to Eclipse, who is now going to box them into the southwest quadrant, as they already own the entire east half. Yeah. So all they need to do is own the northwest half, and well, the northwest quarter. And 07 can't really go anywhere. There's no caps there. Wow. There's no way of aggressing out of it. And, and already four minutes have gone, come and gone here on this battle. So 07 now has half of the battle left to decide what to do and being a tank down. Not a fun position to be in at all if you are the aggressing team. Tigers and Dark on them still sitting here just letting those shots go. David, generally on you know, on, on, on a tank, you know, just kind of talking about this, ooh, get down just in time here against uh, Camador. Uh, you know, how many shots do you roughly have on average per battle. Is it more than enough? Is there, is there ever a time where it becomes like, hey, save your shots, don't shoot, or just like what they're doing, just letting them fly? You're talking about out. ammunition counts. Yes, yes, ammunition oh. counts. At tier 10? Really depends. I mean, a bat shot could conceivably run out. Okay. I think. I know it can in a 15 minute match. In eight minutes, that's a different thing. Mm. Bat shot's really the only one I've ever really had issues with running out sometimes. Okay. Um, so Anything else? Generally. Probably not. You got plenty of shots overall. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's a huge concern. Cool. I was just seeing you know tigers and uh, if you just blind fired on reload, <laughs> sure you could probably <laughs> yeah, get into from the beginning of the yeah the you could probably of the get into a tricky situation. Oh, well, looks like we got a fight there going on. Both of these quadrants over on the northern side, kind of the center of the map, and on the south, Camador taking a lot of damage. 926 in that E5. It looks like he'll be going down. Eclipse. Almost over 4,000 points of HP up, and Drop Gap does take down Camador. That is another tank falling. 407 Warbander getting extremely low as T1 Diabetic finds Magos. Drop Cap, another one finds Warbander. And now it is just three tanks for 07 against all seven for Eclipse. Two minutes on the clock. Nothing 07 can do here to win this one. This is going to be Eclipse's game in the bag. Dark Odds in, surrounding, taking down Rocks. Tigers finding Vetro. And that is going to leave just Synergy 3K. Hey, he might be able to get 3K points of damage here. But look at that rock. Just that rock is his life right now. T22 medium taking a shot there. 294 doing nothing right. 2 and die back circling around here. Ah, it's going to be tough to see if he can get 3,000 damage here. 677, maybe one more shot. Will this final shot be the one that pushes him over the 3K mark? Will it get out in time? No! Drop cab takes him down. And the Eclipse. There's a third victory here against 07 for a third match of the night. Kind of, again, kind of a different pro play that we've been seeing. Usually, we have the Western side where both the teams kind of just kind of smash up against each other, wait out, no one wants to push over the other one because you're just going to expose yourself. The scouts go around and then kind of things go from there. This way, both went very aggressively over on the Eastern side. Was it that, you know, if you're on offense, is it just that much detrimental, more detrimental to you to like, like hey, we're over here. Well, now let's re you know, relocate over this way because while you're doing that, you're just giving the other team opportunity to then push to where you were and gain more map presence. Correct. Okay. Great. Great. <laughs> Great. Sweet. That's exactly it. Uh, did Synergy 3K beat get 3K in stats? Let's find no. out. No. <laughs> but we can. <laughs> yeah. Let's we go. Look at him. Let's go with stats just so we can know that he did. He didn't. There you go. But hey, <laughs> he did pretty well. 1800, and that kind of engagement he had, not bad. Four Eclipse, Bubba Boy Carl, nearly 2,600 damage. Draw Cab with 2,500 damage. T1 Diabetic wow. with 2,200 damage. Oh, Tigers gosh. with 2,100 damage. For some reason, they're putting Master Pupil in an IS-7, so he only got 2,000 because he can't drive fast enough to take the damage away from everybody else. Okay. It's probably deliberate. Is it? No. <laughs> I mean, Actually, that does happen sometimes, though. That huh. does happen sometimes. Really? 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe we need to start lying about, you know, our, our fantasy picks. <laughs> it's not about our fantasy picks. They're oh. not rigging fantasy. Oh. They don't care about that. I thought that's it's, exactly no, what no, you're no. It's because about. they want more fantasy points, like uh, on their player. They want to put more points up. It, it, it didn't happen in that match. It didn't happen in that match. But occasionally, you may see somebody like say say it's three tanks chasing down one. Yeah. Somebody may perhaps block the other guy's shot so that he can't contribute <laughs> because the match is already won because they're on defense. So it's just fun. I mean, hey, yeah. that's a way to have fun it's with your team. It's your teammates. Have, have fun with your team if you guys already won. We're getting ready to go to our next battle. Our clips is up 3-2 to two against 07. Switching sides. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. That makes you feel better, but it's all for morale. Yeah, it's trolling your team. Great, great. Especially, you know especially if you got a guy on the team who cares too much. I take it back. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up for that. If you got a guy on the team who cares too much, we'll come back. <laughs> I-75, 140 STB, T-22, two T-54s for 07 for Eclipse, two E-5s, two 140s, two STBs, and RE-251. Yeah. I mean, if you got a guy on your team who who loves stats, <laughs> and usually there's at least one, t one guy on the team and a lot of the rest of the team, at least with the more veteran teams, a lot of the rest of the guys on the team just don't care. Mm -hmm. Like, cool. <laughs> yeah, we got points. I was only yeah, one. I took all the damage, and you did 3,000 damage. That makes you awesome. Right. You know? And everybody, <laughs> they everybody like, they don't really care that that guy cares a lot, but sometimes it can get annoying, or sometimes it's just fun to troll the guy. Yeah. So, yeah, Trolling's absolutely. Fun. In the right situations, you wow. don't let him get the damage because he gets mad about it, and everybody else just laughs. Oh, sounds fun. See, this is, this is the experience is that sometimes I want to just, all right, yeah, go just go pro for a day. It's go I mean, pro for a honestly, day. Honestly, it's one of the hardest parts about recruiting in North America is you get these guys that care way too much about numbers. Mm. It's like it's a public match. Cool, you did five thousand damage. I don't care. Right. How, how much can did you, you do? Did like, you contribute? Did you do the right thing at the right time? And that may have been not to get shot in a WGLNA match. Sure. You know, in a public match, sure. that's pretty much all there is. is you farm damage and you hope your team farmed <laughs> enough to also win. Because the strategy of it, you can't rely on the rest of your team to do strategically what they need to do. Sure. Right. But in WGLNA, it's the exact opposite. Sometimes you need to jump on the grenade for other people to do damage because they have the better position, things like that. Mm. So it's hard to recruit here sometimes. Because people, people are too, too obsessed with their, their numbers. They're kind of the show. Yeah. It's probably, honestly, a big problem worldwide with World Tanks. But it's a very stat-based community uh, where a lot of people don't understand how statistics work. So <laughs> you get that. You get that a lot. Yeah. Uh, Mort takes some damage to that object 140, dropping into about half health there. And again, uh, these these teams favoring the eastern side of the map. 07 getting over there before the Eclipse could kind of set up and do anything else. But Makos taking a lot of damage. Another shot dropping down to three health in that STB1. One more shot, and he will be going down. It looks like he might be in safety. But he's safe now. Looks like he's safe now. Man. But, I mean, three HP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's safe. <laughs> safe. I'm doing air quotes uh, now. But he could still, uh, again, if, if the fight kind of breaks out, where no one's kind of focusing on him, he could pop out and take some shots. So he, there is still a gun in the battle. I'd rather have a tank with 3 HP than no tank at all. Five minutes, 20 seconds on the clock here, and Vetra moving up over the North Tribe. Maybe could deal with Tigers. Fossa coming on the side. They're going to try a double team here. It'll be interesting to see if Eclipse can keep him alive here. Four damage going to him. Two and Diabetic does take down Magos. Finally, the STV one falling. Fossa taking 917, but Vetro does take down Tigers there. And as a one for one exchange, Mort. Dropping very low in his 140. Finally, just barely Camador taking him down here. And now Vetro getting on the north, starting to uh, just use his uh, fallen enemy as a shield now against the rest of the team. And dodging a shot there. T1 Diabetic taking down Fosta. The fight from the, beginning, from the middle is going on as Rox takes down T1 Diabetic. Just four members for Eclipse against the 5 4 0 7 here. Camador. One more shot away. We'll be going down. Vorbander, though, is very low uh, himself. Eclipse, not low on, or it's not too far down on HP. Uh, just one tank. And if they can get two quick shots here on Camelot or Warbander, they're going to uh, take the lead, not only tank wise, but potentially HP wise as well. One shot there going through Ooh. from Camelot into Bubble Boy for 402 points of damage. Vetro's shot just there missing. Now, David, you know, kind of looking at what we got here, it's it's not really a stalemate. It's almost like an agreement, like, hey, we're all just now just poking and taking DGC. damage. Oh, I thought he was going to go hard. To oh, Petro. Synergy 3K going in he for is. a little bit of ram damage there. Oh, Take no. it down, Bubble Boy. Draw cap. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, Petro. That's bad. Uh oh. Are you 2 by 1 going up against Master Eagle? That's fine. Warbanner in the meantime. 335. They're going into their 2 by 1. Rocks. Take it down, Draw cap. And now just two members remain for Eclipse. So we'll just push up to the north, take down Master Pupil, and Vetro takes down Dark God Zimir. And this is going to be 07, tying it up 3 to 3.
against Eclipse for our third mm. match of the night. Uh, now a much a much different uh, battle than what we just saw last time. Last time it kind of came out of time, and both teams are kind of selling out, and uh, 07 lost a, a scout soon. But this time, 07, again, very aggressively going all the way to the east. That's exactly where Eclipse went, so they stopped there beautifully. Where did that kind of start falling apart for Eclipse? D was it just their positions? Did not get out of there in time? Their timing was wrong, and their focus targets were wrong, and mm. it's something more easily explained on the mini-map. Okay. So we'll do it there when we get there. Right. But in the meantime, there's stats. Let's see how many hit points each team stole from the other one. Ah, uh, yeah. Synergy did 3K. Hey! It's happening. He did it. Vetro did 3,400. How did he know? Rocks with 2,000. How did he know? Here you go. Mako's squeezing in 1,200, even though he almost vaporized himself. <laughs> Draw cab with nearly 2,400. Uh, T1 diabetic one point away from 2,000. Master pupil about 1,800. Hmm. Like I said, timing and execution. And uh, as soon as the match gets started, we'll read off the tank list and start drawing. <laughs> to, see, it's possible. To, see, to see where that happened. Because yeah, uh, we're not guaranteed to have time to really talk about things on this map. Sure. Yeah, it's a much, much, definitely much quicker pace uh, than we've been watching on Himmelsdorf. Uh, and again, if this kind of keeps going back and forth, back and forth, the tiebreaker is Ghost Town. And Ghost Town, I don't mm -hmm. even think we've seen this, this new year. What a brutal tiebreaker. <laughs> what a you brutal tiebreaker. You gotta go in the city. It's on the tier tens. Have fun, guys. I mean, if, yeah. We, again, as, again, we, it's a map that we haven't seen anyone play, really. So just people like, all right, time to just time to just go for it. Uh, so both these teams, I'm guessing, well, <laughs> this is a stupid statement. I would say, hey, both these teams probably not wanting a tiebreaker. <laughs> that makes total sense. Hmm. No one goes into these battles wanting a tiebreaker. This is why, again, I'm on this side. David, you stay over there. Now, it is all tied up 3-3 three to three going into the next battle. Will Eclipse overtake 07 or will 07 overtake Eclipse? Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. 07 with an IS-785, a 142 T22s, a TVP and RE-251. Eclipse with two IS-7s, a 142 TSC, or two STBs, an E3 and an RE-251. Mini map. This is what I'm talking about. So, Eclipse brought some tanks to here. Yep. Trying to pincher out some tanks here. Uh, what we had was 07 had tanks here, here, and here. Okay. And Eclipse brought some tanks here. And they had a couple tanks here, right? Right. Great. General. What yeah. is what is the tank unit all three of these prongs can fire on? This one. That one. This one came here, fired on this one. This one came here, fired on this one. This one came here, fired on this one. And uh, everybody lost Focus their individual fire, fights. Guys. If they all stepped up at the right places at the right time and womboed those guys, then they'd be able to wombo these guys, and then these guys. And the only way these guys can stop is to drive directly into tanks that are waiting for them uphill. They can get fired at from the sides. It is no bueno. So. Execution points, that's sure. it. Got to pick your focus targets. Sure. You got to know who, who the main objective is. Don't have three isolated fights. Create three isolated little fights where all of your tanks can fire on one, and you just laugh your way to victory. All right, there. And that, and, 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 and th and that is something that you can absolutely apply into public matches, right? I mean, oh, fo yeah. Focus fire is a huge part. Oh, yeah. If, if you see, you know, a lot of times you get these back-to-back -back tanks. Don't shoot the one in front of you. Shoot the one that's facing the guys on the other side. You're shooting him in the rear of his turret. Right. And while you may die because the other guy's going to get free damage on you, you'll guarantee that your teammate wins and he can kill somebody else. Granted, in a public match, you can't always trust your teammate to be able to do that. <laughs> and you need to stay uh -oh. alive and farm damage. Uh oh. Dark on Zim oh, getting lit up brutal. and lit up. Rocks taking F. him down there. And that is going to be, uh, yeah, pressing the F with the pain of the respects. Uh, <laughs> that's a weird way of saying that. If respects were dollars, Dark God Zim would be rich. There you go. That's a much better way of saying that. <laughs> uh, so now Eclipse down that uh, all important scout we've talked about here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they kind of play around with that one. So, David, if you were Eclipse right now, and before really any other any of your other teammates have taken damage, and as I'm saying this, they are T1 Dimebag Tigers have taken a little uh, damage here. No one forwarding the SCP1. But let's say you know that didn't happen. You lost a scout. Do you have enough time to be like, all right, now we're doing this plan because... You know, Not on this map. Yeah. You can't counter push. That's the thing. You lose a tank, you typically counter push. But the team has to be in a place where you can counter push on them without driving like not, not 800 one. meters of death. Not this one. And that doesn't really work out on pro. You got to get the right targets at the right time, get the early picks and expand on it and snowball. You will snowball on this map if you play things correctly. All right, Master Pupil and Blue Boy Carl there taking some shots. And there's two IS-7s as they're on the retreat. I could take a second here to kind of show what I was talking about before. Right here, so you have Tigers, it's a little bit more forward. 
than where the 07 guys were. The 07 guys were down closer to where Draw Cab is now, down in this little pocket, mm -hmm. which protects them from being fired at from this side. So these terrain lines, right? Yeah. So from up here, they can see, or at least they can deduce these guys right here. Oh, okay. And so they're actually protected because terrain-wise, 07 couldn't have fired at them, and they could fire here. Wow. So at least that should have been the, the link-up point. That should have been their kind of, kind and of it's, playing with the guy. This is the difference. Even experienced teams make these mistakes. Sure. Sometimes it's just unavoidable. And as a captain, it is the bane of your existence. <laughs> that because happen? sometimes the team is like, well, why didn't you call that? And you're like, well, why can't you see that? <laughs> we, we, you know? This is supposed to be, uh, when you, supposed to be just reaction. When you live your life Instinct. thinking about these principles all the time, sometimes it's hard for you to, to grasp the idea that other people don't understand hmm. or that they have to be shown. But you're the captain largely because you have the best situational awareness and the best wherewithal under pressure mm. to make those decisions. So realistically, expecting your entire team to be able to see it is a very rare thing. And the only team I can ever think of that has really done that perfectly most of the time is Navi from Russia. Really? There have been other teams, like Virtus Pro had it to a certain extent, but they were mostly just plans, 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 and camping. And if you tried to push on them, they hit all their shots, and they rehearsed the plans perfectly. Okay. But when you get into that messy situation, Navi has always pretty much just had seven people calling, and they all know what to wow. do, and they all know wow. what to do at the right I mean, time. That's just, that's just like the, the, it's the, the dream. Yeah, I'll say that, like the best case but scenario. most teams will break their back trying that because it's a super frustrating thing to do. You either have it or you don't. Mort taking a lot of damage there, getting Amorak damage as well, but he immediately fixes it to stay in the game, but he is going to go down here. Oh, Any yeah. second down, 207. One more shot. He'll be going down there in that E3. 60 seconds on the clock. Meanwhile, for 07, applying that northern cap pressure here. Not sure people being sent in, possibly just to get the spot. Uh, but with Carl as well, but they are down so far in HP. Not a single point of damage has been dealt to 07 this entire match in Eclipse. Now about half of their overall HP now dropping below as Bubble War Carl taking even more points of damage there. One more shot. He's going to be going down. Vetro picks him up there. And that's an IS-7 falling for Eclipse and another tank gone. 36 seconds on the clock. Mort still alive. So he's doing a good job there. Digging a shot. Finally, Vetro taking some damage in that 140. 30 seconds though. So going through. Fosta taking a shot there. 525. That's going to be the reset that Eclipse Look at all those bounces. It's not bounces. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm going to have to check out his stats after that battle. It's not going to save him. <laughs> it's not going to save him but at was, all. But it was cool. Eclipse is totally ruined right now. But it was cool to see. Yeah. Vetro dead loader. And that's it. 80 seconds on the clock. Cap does not really mean anything right now as Rox takes down Draw Cap. Mort, Tigers, and T1 Diabetic. 07 knows where they are. They are just not worried at all. Two minutes and 24 seconds on the clock. Tiger's taking even more chunks there in that 140. He's trying to make his way out. I mean, yeah. I was trying to think if they're like, oh man, maybe Eclipse can just pop out with Morton to an diabetic and get some resets here. I mean, two minutes, that's still not a lot of time. Uh, but it looks like just slowly but surely they're going downhill. 18 seconds on the clock. No one's contesting 07 here on the northern cap at all. They're just going to add insult to injury and put more cap. Oh, no. It's Camero driving Yeah, he's through. just driving across. I was like, wow. Wow. Jerk move, guys. Oh, T1 diabetic. T1 diabetic. A huge chunk of damage. 1,100 in that STB1. Brock's being sent over. He knows it's over. He's just going to go try to pick up some kills, get some fancy points. One shot into the ground. The second shot going to Rocks. The third shot maybe into Morton. Let's see if he can fight it. Oh, it bounces. Zero seconds on the clock. Rocks does pick it up at the very end there. And 07 is now be going up 4-3 to three against Eclipse here. One away. It's do or die time One for away Eclipse. Right now. This I didn't getting, see that coming. This is getting down to it indeed. 07 it's like performing amazingly. It's like the day of redemption. For a lot of these teams. Yeah. yeah. Noble, 07. Doing a Simple Taggers played better than they did last time. That's right. Doing it, yeah. Doing I mean, it was a narrow loss. <laughs> That's right. Doing Pretty a narrow job. loss. They, yeah. So, day of redemption for everybody so far. Everyone's coming back. They're like, yeah, you know, you know, game, game time. Game faces, game time here. So that one, I mean, seemed pretty simple. Lost their, uh, lost their scout right in the beginning. Dark on Zim went down super early, and it kind of just fell apart from there. Yeah. Anything else that went? Was that pretty much summed it up? We should, uh, we should inspect our point farm. Oh, let me go, expect it. Inspect, not expect. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Vetro with 2,600. English. Synergy with 2,300. Rocks with 2,000. Mako's 2,000. Nimb Camador 2,000. Warbender 2,000 ish. Everybody just getting a ton of damage in. I lost uh, passive scouting most of the time. That's what I expected. T1 Diabetic with 1,535. Tigers, uh, well, they just got wrecked. I mean, yeah. There's nothing else to say about it. Yep, pretty, pretty, pretty simple. Stats, is, stats really do clear things up. Yep.
<laughs> a lot of time. <laughs> a lot of time to do. Mm. Fun, fun to watch indeed. And now, again, like you said, 0-7, one, one more victory away. It's, it's do or die for them. And they're going to be on defense. So a, a great a great position to be in if you're 0-7 right now. Just got to hold, uh, get one more victory, and they will end out our third match of the night. So Eclipse will be in. I, I, I want to see... I mean, and this is selfish. This is very selfish. But I, I would love to see just some like some crazy thing with the machine on Proke right now. Like Eclipse just like just pull out this amazing strat and go for it. Maybe 07 does it and does this crazy thing coming out from defense. And uh, but I'm, I'm not sure if they will. Uh, Eclipse again. Have been, it has been going back and forth. So Eclipse very well. I could you know pick this one up if they, they don't lose a scout super early. Uh, we are getting ready to go right into this battle. Like David said do or die time for both these teams. Who do you think right now is going to pick it up? Let us know in chat. Do you think 07 is going to get this victory right now or will Eclipse tie it up and will we see Ghost Town for the first time of the new year? Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. 07 with an IS-7, an E5, a 142 T-22s and a T-54. Eclipse with two E5s, two 140s, two SDBs and an RU-251. Okay. Let's see these lineups here. It is not out of the question, although the E5s are kind of slow. We haven't really seen anybody do some of the older, uh, I guess it's more 754 meta. We see a lot of 742 meta, so like the oldest, oldest uh, format. Yeah. We see a lot of uh, the elements of that played in this new format. Oh. We see less of the 754, if you ask me. That's how I see it. Okay. Um, and in 754, a lot of people just sent a scout to go scout the, the middle portion of the map. Mm. And then if they saw their opponent in the right places, they had six tier eights coming up and over ready to rock. And it was just direct fights okay. a lot of the time on this map. Uh, maybe that's not possible in the meta anymore. Maybe the tanks are slower. I mean, tier 10s, uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know, objectively, if the timing on it still works. Or if people just don't like the risk of it. Mm. But it'd be cool to watch. Kind of turn the turn Proke into the into the new Cliff. <laughs> then what would Cliff be? Cliff would be oh man, oh, the gotta, old Cliff. I gotta think about this. There we go. <laughs> uh, right now again, just like uh, last time, most of the team biasing themselves to the east here, uh, but we do have Eclipse, the RU251, about to cap. Um, no, he's actually driving right by the northern cap here, driven by Dark God Zim. Uh, going right down the uh, territory. He does for a second go over cap. I'm sure that was a mistake. So I think he probably wanted to remain unseen. If if you know if I if I were to take a guess there, uh, he is now spotted uh, by Fossa. Fossa has gotten over the other side of the railroad track to keep himself safe. Uh, Dark Ozim is now going to move back and maybe apply cap pressure, but definitely he's he's I mean not behind enemy lines there, but very far away from the rest of his team. Definitely closer to the enemy. You are not wrong there. Still trying to figure out exactly where Eclipse is trying to get momentum. Looks like they got some hill pressure here. That's relatively safe as long as the E5 and IS-7 don't get good line shots on them. The kind of pocket they're in right now, that's a possibility. Mm. But it's really going the other way around. Warbanger. Warbanger is getting lit up and goes down. Apparently nobody on the hill actually got even spotted. So that's, uh, that's Makos and company over there. Synergy not getting the spots they need to allow their wow. teammates to get now crossfire. The and now ZXFT is next on the block here. And the E5s are, are doing kind of what we were talking about before. They're they're just zoning, essentially. This is an old esports term for it. Mm. Well, old gaming term. Zoning to keep people from moving into certain places, denying their ability to move around while somebody else does damage to them. A great job as well as they already picked up an I-7 falling for 07. A great start. I were in clips. 9,243 onto 07 overall against 12,332 Eclipse. And T1 Diabetic takes down ZXFT as an E5 falling. And 07, it looks dire right now. And it looks like we might be Look seeing Ghost Town. Dark God Zim sending in shots all the way from the A6 area directly into the back of these tanks as they're going up wow. the hill. Now he's got Vetro in the wow. back. Wow. All the units of Eclipse are aligning and firing on the same things. Mort is trying to hit Vetro there. That seems to be the main isolation, their main focus target, as Master People is now also putting in shots on the side back side of the hill, guys. They're all cross-supporting each other, so there's no direct fight happening. But it's going to happen as Makos and Foster are going to try and push directly into this. And a 1,000 going down on Foster right off the bat. One more, two more shots. That T-54 is going to be going down. T-1 Diabetic picks that one up, and Eclipse wants to take us to a tiebreaker. They want to win this one against 07, and Draw Cap taking Makos is one step closer 
closer to that victory. It is all over for 070 here as Druk takes down Rocks. Beautiful focus fire. All looks like every single member of Eclipse just lighting up these things here. 611 going to Synergy 3K. A couple more seconds, he'll be going down. And Vetro now is the last standing member of 07. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to a tiebreaker. We are going to see Ghost Town, and it'll be interesting to see who will take it. Will it be 07? Will it be Eclipse? Vetro taking a lot of damage. 659, 1,000 points of HP here. And now Tigers picking that one up. Nice finish in there for Eclipse. And we're kind of talking again about uh, talking to Meadowhawk here before we started. And he said uh, they, they really needed a point. At, you know, they at least need a point in this, uh, you know, in this in this battle here. So this is a this is a really a really big deal for 07. I mean, like we're talking about, the relegation danger is is real for them, and so they're going to need every victory they can. And like I said, Noble is one of the next going to fight up against high voltage. So I mean, they they are, as a team, this this victory means so much to them. And Eclipse on the other side, talking to um, you know, talking to Bubble Boy, Blue Mini. Blue Mini. Master Pupil. Master Pupil. My gosh, so many <laughs> names. I feel uh, sorry. Uh, before, and how I was saying, like, you know, they, they want to hold their position here. They are in third place. They feel like they are uh, doing a great job. And so, again, a big, a big, a big battle, a big victory for them would be great here. It looks like we're getting where the Eclipse is the one who gets to choose as they had a four minute, four second uh, attack uh, on their match. And so, uh, obviously, on Ghost Town, I'm guessing defense, right? Yeah, probably. I mean, on Ghost Town, you could essentially poke and rotate around enough. That the enemy team just blows most of their time trying to find where you are to engage you. Hmm. It's not a comfortable place to be in. Sure. Which is probably why we <laughs> makes sense why we haven't seen this map a lot. Let's check out those stats while we can. Let's do it. It's gonna happen any second. Oh, there it is. We had to pitch battle viewer first. Yeah, because so it's important, it's guys. Eclipse wow. picks attack. Wow, look at that. That is what we have just seen and heard. That's crazy talk, but we'll get to that here in a second. <laughs> crazy talk. Bubble boy Carl, 35. Hundred damage. T1 diabetic behind him with 2400. Mort with 2300. Tigers with 1800. Master people with 1800. A lot of people are getting in a lot of damage. Over here, not. And Eclipse just took a timeout. Yeah. Using Good time one. to take a timeout if there ever was one. Yeah, best time to do. That. It always interests me. I mean, maybe you can we can elaborate. We talked a little bit about a little bit about this last season of why when you I mean every team has one timeout that they can take during a battle or during a match. And sometimes they don't even take it at all. I mean, even if it is like comes to a tiebreaker, we see some teams just going right into it. Is that some is that a lot to do with like they want to keep the momentum? Is is they just don't want to give their opponent an opportunity to think? Is you know, is that kind of why you wouldn't take a timeout? Because I feel like, oh yeah, let's regrow our thoughts. It'd be hard to, to guess why a lot of people don't take timeouts. Um, I don't really even remember if we were able to take timeouts back when I played. If we did, we didn't really do it. Okay. Um, probably a number of reasons why, honestly. Sure. It just comes down to just team mad. preference. Some okay. people like the idea of cooling somebody else off, but I always think that the longer somebody gets time to think, the better they're going to be. It's a two-way street, you know? And if we prepared as best as possible, then we should know better than they do what to do without time to sit down and talk about it. Gotcha. And so you want to use it as an advantage? Yeah. I don't know. Depends. Okay. Really depends. Just personal preference, team preference. In this case, it makes a whole lot of sense. You got everything's on the fence. Uh, if perhaps you need to brush up on some execution points and make sure everybody knows, which Eclipse is still a new team, hmm. technically, if sure. you think about it. Sure. Uh, so they, they don't necessarily have that experience to go, we're just doing our... Ghost Town break. Right. You know? Right. We've been doing for well, six months. And we haven't seen like that. Ghost Town a lot, so it does make even more sense why you want to kind of take that break. To be like, All right, this is what we're going to bring. This is what we're going to do. David, do you think we'll be seeing an artillery? Maybe? Mm. No? Hmm. Hmm. Because we've seen that in the past. We've seen Ghost Town artillery being brought. Hmm. hmm. On offense? Well, if, if Eclipse is choosing offense, obviously they think they have some sort of trick to it. Sure. Maybe Artie is that trick. Maybe mouses. I don't know if the mouses are necessarily great on this map. A lot of close quarters and it negates a lot of what the mouse is good at. Uh, especially when you get really close to a mouse, it's easy to side hug it. Ah. And then it's all flat armor on the side. It's easy to penetrate. Oops. And it's actually harder for the mouse <laughs> to get its gun down to shoot you. Uh, there was a period of time. Pro tips. I don't know if this is still the case. Because it's not a common situation you used to get into. Matchmaking and all that used to be different years and years and years ago. And it wasn't all that weird for a T-54 to have to go 1v1 with a mouse at some point in time in a game. That sounds crazy. And if you actually hug like the side David of it with a T-54, the mouse couldn't penetrate you. It could, <laughs> oh, that's it, so it, All sad. it had was a little bit of your turret. That'd be so it. frustrating. Like, yeah. ah. Well, 
Mm. I didn't play a mouse, so it's hilarious to me. Oh, I okay. <laughs> so be on the other side of that. Well, yeah. right now, ladies and gentlemen, the tiebreaker match to decide who will be the victor. Will it be 07? Will it be Eclipse? We're going to Ghost Town, where Eclipse has chosen to attack. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. 07 with E100, 2215s, an IS4, an I E5, and E3 in an AMX 5100. Eclipse with 2213, 2, 50 b an IS7, and E5, a Conqueror, and T54. No arty. No arty. Man. Got some guts. Big attack. Offense on yeah. a defensive heavy map. Maybe it. Is that his mic? Now 07's going, oh. That's exactly that's what they're doing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You could certainly be on the side. I mean, t teams handle this kind of thing differently. Some teams would laugh and be like, I don't know why they gave us defense. <laughs> they must be crazy. <laughs> sure. And then usually, at least the captain is like, well, if they, if they picked offense, it's got to be for a reason, right? So they're always looking for some sort of trick. Maybe there is no trick. Maybe it's all just a head game. We'll find out shortly. Maybe the 113s are small enough to actually cap like they used to. Over yeah, here, I was say, which would, was the problem. Yeah, with your right? 10. Yeah, because they're too tall. Are they short enough? Maybe. Well, we might see they Eclipse. They don't look short enough for this. Me 100 can still shoot HE in here and ruin everybody's birthday. Well, that's exactly what Eclipse is trying. Maybe they practiced this. Maybe they found a way to assault the Northern Cap on Ghost Town. Only time will tell right now. 42 seconds on the clock, and it looks like this is what Eclipse is putting all their eggs into right now. 25 seconds as Draw it's, Cap. It's the Mako's position him. that concerns me more than anything else. That spot is so good at Tier 10 because the tanks can actually bounce shells somewhat reliably if you angle it right. All Apparently right. they think this is the bigger concern. This road right here, but nobody's even there. Wow, Makos did take a shot, didn't penetrate, no damage. Is this going to happen? And the cap is, is going through. Happen? Five seconds on the clock. Eclipse, no, Makos does find the shot there. And the rest of 07 now getting into position. Looks like a bit of a banning there from a lot of them coming up. But six seconds on the clock. Eclipse still has the pressure on. Locked and that ones. shot didn't go through. It is now up to synergy 3K to hit one. He is lining. He is winning. There's two double hits. But Fossa, meanwhile, is going down. So much damage there, though, going into Eclipse. Ooh. Tigers does find Fosta. Man, Eclipse got so close right there to taking the cap here. 07, though, successfully stopped. I don't think that's their goal. I think we're about to see whatever their overall plan is because that would be insane for that to be the main goal. All right, we'll see right now if they have a, now a stage two here to what uh, they just basically forced 07 into a very forward position against them. A little bit of cap pressure going out to the uh, center here. And they brought the T54 now. Dark on Zim. They're trying to bait 07, moving back it. and forth. They're going to try to take them in the cross as they're now going over to the center where the cap pressure is. Eclipse definitely does have a plan here. Let's see if it works out. Magos is one shot from going down. ZXFT can't really get out of the position he's in. Synergy 3K and Vetro are far too far to actually rotate over and stop any of this cap pressure. Actually, no, they, no they he's off, off the cap Dark now. Dark Zim is just going to rotate out. around the outside and get those beautiful scout shots into the backside of very, very big tanks wow. that don't have a lot to rotate around. As long as Eclipse can hold the front line here, DGZ is going to come bringing it all home. Synergy 3K uh, does pick up a kill right there. So now one tank gone for both the teams. Draw Cap was going to fall there, and then IS7. Uh, Makos is low. Dark is in his spot there. He takes a shot. I'm not sure if he, I think he did that one onto Rox here, but he takes some damage in return. Now they are turning their turrets. Uh, 07 turning their turrets to deal with Dark Ozim. This is Eclipse's opportunity to take down some of these tanks as they are kind of in the move. Vetro and Makos being sent to take care of Dark Ozim while Synergy 3K Counter -push. facing forward. And there comes 07. They know that Eclipse is doing something. They want to do something of their own. They're going to send Warbander Rox and ZSFT down up against T1 Diabetic and Tigers. Tigers does have four shots there in that 50B, so 07 does have to be careful as they're pushing through. A one-shot bouncing there from T1 Diabetic onto Warbander, and 450 going into Tigers. 45 seconds, though, is on the clock, so the, the cap pressure is continuing to go through against 07 here. T1 Diabetic doing a great job just kind of keeping a Warbander away, but actually it looks like not so much now as he takes another shot there, and then E5 and another 354. Oh, man, Eclipse, 6,100 points as far as HP goes overall, 7,500. Oh, Vetro DGZ took down, down Dark God Sam, and that seemed like five? such like a, a huge what? part of Eclipse's plan. Joe, he actually drove over there and caught a before. That shouldn't happen at all, but Eclipse is counter-pushing, trying to take down ZXFT, countering the counter-push. Bubble Boy Carl going to go for that kill shot on ZXFT. And Rox, Warbanner trying to hold the line and keep 07 in this fight. Ooh, let's see if he does it. Bubble Boy does take him down, but Synergy and Rox taking down double kill. Tigers and more falling for Eclipse. Five tanks in the side of 07 against now just the three of Eclipse. It looks like Eclipse had a plan, and it looks like they were possibly about to flush it out, but 07 has done a great job thwarting that one. 
taking some damage there onto Rox. If Rox goes down, it might. No, Rox picks down a bubble boy Carl, and that looks like that is going to do it. As Synergy 3K does find Master People, it is just T1 Diabetic against four tanks of 07, 07, and three minutes and 13 seconds. Just so they are going to finish this one out. Warbander on the reload. Magos on the reload as well. T1 Diabetic looking to take down Magos before he goes down himself. Magos shot is up. He does. T1 Diabetic picks up that 5B. But he does take a shot there. Warbander quickly ending it. And that is going to be 07's fifth victory against Eclipse. Finishing off the third match, 5-4. to four. Now, I really did like to see, I really did love what Eclipse is doing there. Uh, they put the cap pressure on. It got down to what? Three seconds? Four seconds? I mean, they, they, I mean, they almost even capped it out there. But then once they pushed over, they pulled him out to the center. They moved Dark God Zim off of that center cap. And, and use him kind of more of like a, a flanking maneuver to try to get some damage around some big tanks. Again, I know this is such a crazy, like, oh, what if this and what if that, but do you think it would have been better for him to just stay on the center cap and, and you know, cause us seven to panic more? No, I think it would have better, been better for him to flank around the one two line better and get the huh. kills that he Okay, so what, he, so what he did? Not, not have a 2 1 5, hmm. a fairly slow tank, hmm. drive all the way across the map and catch you, a T 54, a fairly fast tank gotcha. in the one line. Gotcha. So just maybe just maybe a little bit a little bit of misplays coming out there. Let's look at the numbers. Let's take a look at stats. Synergy 3K, 4,000 damage in the E3. Boom. Warbander, 3,000 damage in the Boom. IS4. He was also doing a cute little 215 impersonation there at the end. I don't know if you caught it. No, he, I didn't. Yeah, his turret turned around. <laughs> oh, God. It just threw me off because for a second I was like, that's a weird looking 215. Oh, it's an IS-4. That. that makes sense. Beautiful. Vetro with 25, 25. Tarox with 2,400. Foster the only one really getting caught out. ZXFT. Well, there you go. He also got caught out. Meanwhile, for Eclipse, Bubble Boy Carl putting up nearly 4,000. T1 Diabetic nearly 4,000. Nobody else really getting in the fight. Mm. T1, uh, they just had so many different opportunities for Eclipse to get a proper flank. They had a lot of their stuff going for him. Has fumbled the responses. All right, there. So congratulations to 07 for picking up and winning our third match of the night. Yeah. Do not go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Our fourth and final match, Aquatic M60s versus Sip, is coming right up.